any sand sculptor can tell you around the world is that is only sand and water. And those boxes come off. We remove the nails, take away the, the wood, and there's a nice block of sand that you can sculpt into. There is a, some people think that we have a core of wood and we cover it with sand, and that is not true. In the sand sculpting community, we call the packing process the pound up, because we are pounding the sand and building it up. So you have a two foot form, everything is in two foot increments, it seems to work very well. Easy to climb on as well. And uh, sand and water, compact it, sand and water compacted until it's full, and then you put a smaller form on top, and you just do that until you're at the height that you want to go. You go to the beach, our beautiful beaches here and in Florida, the sand has been rolling around in the ocean. It's like a big rock tumbler. So you pick up the sand and you stick it under a microscope and the grains are round like a marble. And if you try to stack marbles on top of each other, there's not, they slide off of each other. Sand from a quarry, river or lake, is going to be angular, flat, have some edges. It's got a lot of edges on it and it, it holds itself together. It binds real well. So it's better than most sands. And, uh, but you still have to realize it is sand. And sand likes to stand like it comes out of an hourglass at about 45 degrees. And we started doing this with sand, and this was sand, and this was sand. It's got to be pretty good sand. I think you have to be a little bit uh, flexible with sand because it can be something falls off or some part was not so good or you just see how it looks, how is the sun or things like that. So maybe that's why we're a bit deciding while we're making it. You have to deal with the weather. And most people, their first question is, what happens when it rains? And we usually say, we go to the bar and have a nice frosty beer until it stops. But the bigger enemy for a sand sculpture is the wind. Because the wind will blow away all of your detail. So then you'll have this really interesting shape and no detail in it. What we do is we have a large sprayer filled with water, put about a quarter inch of Elmer's glue basic glue, makes the water white. Spray it on the outside of the sculpture and it creates a crust. And that crust holds that detail shape in place so it doesn't blow away. The spray we put on is after we've completed a sculpture, uh, completed a section that, that we don't want to touch anymore, we'll spray a windscreen on it. It basically just soaks in just a little bit on the surface keeps uh, the wind from blowing it away, and then when it rains, keeps the raindrops from pitting the surface. For Art of Sand, we want to have a nice variety. There's a variety of styles, a variety of themes. We have an overall blanketing theme, but the artists were allowed to really branch off from there. There's not that many people who do sand. Um, and because of that small community, most everyone knows everyone else. There's a lot of uh, joking around. And uh, yeah, and we all care about each other. Something happens personally to one of our sculpting colleagues, we're there for them. That's the one nice thing about sand is it sculpts quickly. You can get a result very fast. And that's, um, you know, instant gratification. It's wonderful. <laughs> so uh, that you're covered with sand, you got it in your ears, it's all kind of gritty in your teeth, but there's nothing that beats the feeling of a job well done and a satisfying day. And you're watching your artwork unfold before your eyes. There's nothing that can touch that. It's fabulous.